talking about Croatia as underdogs. At the end of the day, they were beaten finalists in 2018. You know, they're not mugs on, on the international stage. I mean, you look at everything they've achieved since 1998, and it's incredible. I mean, for such a relatively small country compared to some of the other nations, bigger nations that they go up against. Uh, Mike, I'm going to come to you first. Would Croatia reaching another final be the greatest underdog achievement in World Cup history? I mean, is, is it really even fair to call them underdogs given what they managed to achieve on such a, a consistent basis? Absolutely. You look through this team, they have world-class players. Luka Modric is a world-class player. And I think Brozovic on his day can be world-class. Their midfield is the heart and soul of this team. But I love, just like last World Cup, different players are stepping up to become unsung heroes and they have an unsung hero between the sticks in their goalkeeper i want to issue an apology to the croatian national team i was sitting on this and you know my wife told me this right after the game she or after our show last show we did she said you should have been on croatia like croatia is going to win this game so as you married guys know <laughs> she was right i was wrong and also sorry croatia i said you had no chance in hell i said you wish you had the depth of the Brazilian national team, and I look like a mug, not you, me. Now that that's over with, I'm applauding this Croatian national team. I'm not ready to jump on the full-on bandwagon just yet, but I do appreciate what I see from them. Game management is their strength. That midfield core, how they managed this game against Brazil, that was first class. That is the experience from the 2018 World Cup. As long as you have experience in your back pocket, that can take you further than having raw talent can. Did they have more talent than Brazil today? Absolutely not. But they were more cohesive and they had more experience in when to be effective when it mattered most. I'm not going to dwell too much on it, Mike. I think uh, you put in some great points there. I think for me, the big thing about Croatia is I think it's that it's that experience. That's the biggest word when you look at Croatia, that experience, the intelligence. This is the first test that Brazil were going to face. And we did say that. I called it to be a tight game. I couldn't see Brazil losing because of the talent they had. And I look like a mug just like Michael too. But this is goes to show. Hard work will beat talent if talent doesn't work hard. And that's what I saw today. But for me, take nothing away from Croatia. They are a phenomenal team, intelligent football players. And the way they destroyed Brazil for me was in that midfield area how they moved the ball. And you could see the respect that Brazil showed them because Brazil didn't press at the same high intensity as they did against South Korea. And when Croatia moved that ball one, two touch in that midfield area, Brazil were lost. And that's how you do it. So they're showing a bit of a blueprint how to play against these top sides. And I guarantee as much as Argentina has gone through, Argentina know they've got a real tough task with this Croatia team because the Croatia team have the capability to play football and can also be direct and can be physical. And they have got just as much talent as Argentina. And I think this is a perfect matchup because in Argentina, you have Messi and in Croatia, you have Modric. So that for me is just a perfect matchup when you look at this match. But in the Brazil perspective, I would say that Brazil let themselves down. I think this is a massive, massive shock for Brazil for the talent that they have for not being able to get the job done. For me, yes, Neymar got the goal. But I would question, would you have kept him on or would you have taken him off? Because for me, Neymar did not look 100% throughout the game. And he's a liability when it comes to pressing when you play Neymar, when in such a big game. And I'd question the, the, the substitutions made. Yes, you got the luxury of bringing on Rodrigo. You're bringing on Pedro as well from Flamingo. My biggest thing is this, and I want to know what Lucho thinks. I think the biggest impact player that they should have brought on that they didn't bring on is Martinelli. I think Martinelli is a bigger yeah. impact player than Anthony. And I, I'm not a big Anthony fan because for me, he looks to deceive because he gets on the ball, but does he really beat a player? Does he go to the byline? I don't think any of the Brazilian players did that. They, they became so predictable and going in, but with the likes of Martinelli, which goes back to what you were just speaking about, uh, about the Spanish team and the players they need to produce, mm. that is a Martinelli. And I feel he could have had a bigger impact in this game Take nothing from Croatia. I think they deserve it. It's a big shock. I don't think anyone predicted that. And uh, what do you think, Lucho? Yeah, we can we can call them uh, that horse because I'm sure that in the beginning of the competition, no one was talking about Croatia to arrive to semifinals. We can give them a lot of credit because they were a good team. They were experienced. You will uh, well said, uh, Nigel. They got so much experience. They got talent because today, Kramaric, Perisic, um, 
and uh, uh, Pasali, they were not the, the best up front, but definitely you know that when they are on the ball, they can make the difference. Not today, but they were, they can make the difference. But definitely if Brazil goes ahead of you, the first thing that you have to do is, listen, let's hold on, let's get at the back, have a look to the, to the score, have a look on the time, and let's handle this situation the proper way. You cannot be Brazil and decide to go for to go to, to keep the same way. You score the goal in the hundred and fifth minute, and let's keep normal. Let's keep doing the same because we are Brazil, and we're gonna we're gonna continue doing the same. Because if you see the goal, you can say, you can understand that that midfield didn't track back. That midfield didn't work as properly as they should. You allowed Croatia to believe. You allowed Croatia to continue following. This Croatia was all done after Neymar's goal, but you allow them to believe. And that's something that cannot happen. You cannot happen into the game and giving a call to the manager, say, listen, if you are the manager, listen, let's make a change, you score a goal, and let's put this be- to this game to bed. And they didn't do that. Croatia is a team that uh, believes. They, they, they got quality. And you guys have been talking about the, the midfield. They have so much quality, so much experience in that midfield. And today, they were the, the, the core of this team. They were the heart of this team. And they are 100 years old between the three of them. <laughs> but at the end, that kind of experience, in, mo- in tough moments, it comes out. And it shows that they can, they can produce good performances. And I think that at the end, I'm not talking about penalties because penalties are a different, different thing. But during the game, you allow them to believe. And these teams are, you, they need only just a little bit. And we've seen it in the previous game. If you allow them to believe just a little bit, they will handle the game. They will control the game. They will do what these needs in, in, the, in, in those minutes. And today, once again, they needed a goal and they have that goal. Even when they looked that they were all done. So at the end, it's about knowing what to do in every moment. And that experience that Modric, Kovacic, Brosnitz have, that's something special, and well, we'll see how 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 far they can uh, go. Uh, they go to semifinals right now, and probably if you I ask you, listen, are they gonna go out? You will say, no, they have no chance against Argentina. And Argentina is exactly the same. They could do the same. They could yeah. exactly play like a regular game, but with one or two teams, if they believe, one or two play, if they believe, they will go to the final without. I haven't seen one. Good game about this Argentina team. And they're in semifinals. How is this possible? Exactly the same with Croatia. Uh, just a couple stats that jump out to me. Penalty kicks are the difference for this Croatian team. It's their recipe for success. I said it jokingly that all the things, Brilliant. all the nightmarish yeah. things had to happen for Brazil to fall flat on their face. It definitely looked like Neymar was at the club last night. Can't confirm or deny it. JJ Benj, I'm going to wait mm-hmm. for your article to come out. But Dominic Livakovic, this guy, Saved three penalty kicks in the last matchup win in the previous round. Two today, almost a mirror image of what we're seeing from the PK heroics from Emmy Martinez. Martinez didn't save PK's last game, but those solid goalkeepers in the knockout stages is going to make for a mouthwatering matchup, tactical matchup with Argentina. Luka Modric as well. A place that he goes for penalty kicks. One thing to keep an eye on, should we find ourselves in PKs again for the semifinals? Messi goes first. Luka Modric, each of the PK shootouts he's been involved in, he goes third. That is a crucial number in PK shootouts at the World Cup. That can tip the tide of momentum in your favor, or it can go against you for Croatia. What I love about Croatia as well, I don't think we're giving their back line. Dejan Lovric, the, the, the partnership that he's forming with Guardiol, this kid You talk about the likes of Cody Gakpo and the price tag going up. This kid's price tag, defensive player for Red Bull Leipzig that you can watch on Paramount Plus in the Champions League when it comes back as well. Part of a Leipzig team that is kicking butt and taking names. Not sure if we can still, uh, if we still have to hold back the reins on our potty mouth, but I will uh, put my seatbelt on just in case. Um, This is a player that I, I didn't think put a foot wrong in this World Cup. Only criticism I had was you see what happens when he is not in the right position. On the Neymar goal, Guardiola was caught in no man's land. It was a domino effect. It was when Luka Modric stopped running. Guardiola caught in no man's land, doesn't know if he should come out. Because he vacates that space, because he vacates that partnership with Dejan Leverin, that is the space that Neymar exploits. I expect Croatia to learn from that because Guardiola is going to have to play his best football yet to put up with the likes of Lionel Messi and Julian Alvarez.